Ah, I'm apparently live. I hope this works out, that there's enough light on me because it's a sunny day out there. It's a bright sunny day out there. And, uh, and so <laughs> I'm off to a start. Um, here in British Columbia, we have an annual um, release. And in this release, there are, are um, whiskeys that you can't usually get, uh, or they're new things or things that are hard to find around here. And um, the spirits release happens every year, beginning of November. And uh, we end up getting things that a lot of the rest of the world got already, but we haven't had yet. Um, there are some bottles that were available last year at the spirits release that there were also available in this year's spirits release. I mostly um, concentrated on Canadian whiskey. Uh, well, because I'm in Canada and, and to be honest, it costs less <laughs> than scotch and bourbon and Irish. Well, maybe not Irish, but most whiskeys cost more than Canadian, so you can get some really good things. You can get like 20 year old whiskey for under $100. You know, it's fantastic. Right now, I'm actually um, nosing one of those. This is a 20 year old 90 from uh, Highwood in, um, in Alberta. And it, it's like $60. It's 20 year old pure corn whiskey. Okay, it's pure corn, but it's had some barrel influence being 20 years in the in the cask. Mm. Stuff is good. Well, let's see, is anybody commenting yet? We got a live chat happening. And should I pop out the chat? I'll pop out the chat, see if anybody joins. Uh, I've got a few people watching right now. Move this over there. Now we got five people watching. That's cool. Okay. So I guess I'll start. And if people are interested in finding out what uh, what I got, if they join later on, they can always go back to the beginning. Or they can ask me and say, well, what was that bottle you had? Uh, you know, can do that too. So without any further delay or ado, I will uh, start uh, pulling out bottles from these boxes I got at my feet. And right here, this is you know, some of these boxes are kind of kind of weak. This one is the uh, Forty Creek Victory. Forty Creek is a distillery in Grimsby, Ontario, on the Niagara Peninsula. Um, they have an annual release. This is their annual release, uh, 205th anniversary of the engagement with 40 during the War of 1812. Okay, Bourbon Professors here saying cheers, Andy. Uh, sneakers and Scotches saying hello, Quig. Fantastic. Nice to have you with us. We've got six people watching. Hopefully a few more will join us as we go along. And this is the, uh, yeah, the Forty Creek Victory. This is from this year's uh, release and there's Captain 3D. <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks for joining in. I really enjoyed your uh, your uh, your haul. This is kind of a haul too, but it's a little one. It's today's haul. It's it's the BC Premium Spirits release haul. And it's Forty Creek Victory. It's a Canadian whiskey, limited 2019 edition. Um, yeah, 79.99. So eighty dollars. And with the 15% uh, taxes, it comes in under 100 Canadian. So, you know, it's hard to go wrong. 43% alcohol by volume, 750 mils. And bottle number 11,809. 11, so they've got a lot of bottles. Uh, I don't know how many the total is. It doesn't say of how many. But this is from the uh, Grimsby, Ontario. Um, here's one that I did not get last year. But wait, we got more people. 
here saying sneakers and scotch. They got the JP Weiser's 23 year old. It's great. I got it too, but it's going to be a while till I open it. But we're jumping ahead here. Uh, <laughs> Bourbon Professor says, nice to sneakers and scotch. And Jason Coates is here. Oof, there we go. Was trying to say hi, but my phone keyboard wouldn't pop up. Oh, well, no, you're saying hi. It's working. It's okay. This is one I did not get last year. It's the Red Breast Lustau. And this stuff sold out, I think, in a couple weeks. There was none left. And uh, it's got a bunch of stuff here. I guess Lustau edition is a, a sweeter wine than what you'd get in the Red Breast 12 or the 15 or the 12 cast strength. But I love the 12 and the 12 cast strength, so I thought I'd get this one too. The 15 and the 21, they're expensive. This one cost me, what did it say here? Oh, not too bad. It was uh, 104. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, 94 99 So with approximately $14 worth of tax, or maybe $14.50, uh, we're talking $115. No, not even $110 Canadian. Not bad. So, yeah, that's going to be nice. So I got my Lestau edition of uh, Red Breast. Uh, Jay Chung is listening from the car. Fantastic. Uh, and Jason Coates says, hey, Jay. Sneakers and Scotch says, hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. And Jay says, hey, uh, Jason Coates uh, and everybody else. Uh, Hoagie Bear is here. Fantastic. Good to see you, Hoagie. Old Mac Quiggy had a farm distillery. <laughs> Old Mac Quiggy. <laughs> okay. Next one. Now, I ordered all of these uh, at the beginning. I was number 12 in line. And uh, I got there about an hour before the store opened, so I didn't do too bad. But I was number 12 in line, so I got everything that I ordered. And these are things that I ordered off a list. Basically, there's a booklet. Let me find the booklet. Here's the Premium Spirits Release booklet. And it has all the whiskeys. You know, in, it's like a catalog. It's got all these whiskeys and how much it costs. And they gave us a list also. Oh, yeah, here's my list of what they had available <coughs> at the store that I usually shop at. And, uh, you know, it tells what they had from the booklet. So it was easy to choose. You know, I just put a clip on, on a, It was easy to choose. I just put a little tick. If you can see that, I just put a little tick next to the ones that I wanted. Uh, yeah, there's a tick right there, and there's some down here. Yeah. Hi. Oh, did you see what this one was yet? Since I had the uh, Highland Park um, Valkyrie, which wasn't my favorite, but I also had the Vulcanut or Vulcanut. Uh, the the um, video about that one is already on YouTube, but I don't think it's seen the light of day yet. It hasn't gone public yet, but it's up on YouTube. So I just tried that one like a couple weeks ago. This one is the Volfather. This is the last from the uh, series of the uh, Valhalla Valkyrie um, Viking Legend releases. This is the third one. So that one here... The Valfather, what did that cost me? Uh, come on. I can't believe I don't see it here. Wait, have another drink. Oh, maybe get it. Mm -hmm. um, Where are you? Ah, here it is. Valfather. $89.99. So 
comes in out the door between $104 and $105 Canadian. I was trying to get an average of about $100 a bottle, which is reasonable. And we got more people here. Captain 3D saying hi to Jay and great to watch a Quig live. Yeah, Jay, I'm having fun with this. Uh, I, you know, I do so many pre-recorded things, but when something special happens like the, like this um, release, it's nice to, you know, come on live and, and say, hey, this is what I bought today. Okay. And Hoagie's saying, short words, what is the BC Premium release all about? Okay, I'll tell you. Basically, you know, as the year goes on, there are lots of new whiskeys that become available in different parts of the world. And they kind of get stockpiled in warehouses. You know, the British Columbia government buys all this whiskey and stockpiles it in, in warehouses. And then uh, in, at the beginning of November, you know, whiskeys that you could get months ago, like for example, the um, Macallan edition number five. The first time it was seen in British Columbia stores was today. And there are some people who have bought it a long time ago. But um, something like edition number five takes a while to, uh, to sell out. So, um, and I'll get to that soon <laughs> about things selling out. Um, lost my train of thought. It, it got derailed somewhere. Uh, and Hoagie thinks, uh, he says the Vault Father is a nice whiskey. Uh, clear whiff to, of peat in it. Good. Uh, there should be some peat in Highland Park. There should be. And Jason Coates liked the Vault Nut too. Yes, so did I. I, I liked it. The, the flavors were a little bit subtle, but they were balanced. And uh, I enjoyed that one a lot more than the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie was a little harsh. In fact, I preferred the Magnus to the Valkyrie. I may be speaking sacrilege to um, Highland Park aficionados, but um, no, I preferred the, the Magnus to the Valknut, uh, not Valknut, uh, Valkyrie. In fact, I went through two bottles of Magnus in the time I drank one bottle of um, uh, Valkyrie. Bourbon Professor giving me four thumbs up. I can only do two at a time. And Whiskey Ace says hello at Food Quig. Hi, Whiskey Ace. Been a while since I've seen you. Okay, so getting on with the spirits release. It is the one day where they have these whiskeys that are new or special or limited edition uh, from the last several months, and they just release them all in one shot. One day, they, they have all these whiskeys available in the store, and uh, you can go get them, and, but, you know, there are some that sell out right away, so you have to be fast. You have to be early. I slept through my alarm this morning. My alarm was set for 6 o'clock. I'm waking up at 7.21 going, oh, I wonder what time it is. Turn on the light and look at the clock, and it says 7.21. Oh, shit, I better hurry. So I just threw some clothes on and got down to, to the liquor store, and it was still, it was, they were letting people in and uh, they let us make our orders. And I was the 12th one in line. So I just got to choose what whiskeys I wanted to buy. And if they were still available, when my number came up, I could take them home. That's kind of what the, uh, the whole thing is about. And Highland Park and Pete were once common, yes. But I've had quite a few younger releases, official single cast, which almost had no peat in them. Yeah, that's a shame. That's kind of like uh, McAllen going from uh, European sherry casks to uh, American oak. I guess maybe the stuff that is um, – Known for being in there is not available any longer. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little change here. I'm gonna open up open up the other window 
and see if that improves the lighting, does it? Well, it lights my face up a little brighter than it was. Okay. Yeah. Highland Park and Pete were once common. Okay. So there's the uh, the Valfather. It may be a while till I get to that one, too. Okay. That's the Valfather. The Valkanut or Valkanut, uh, which we did already. Yeah. Okay, that's only like the first three whiskeys from, I think I bought 12 of them. That's the small box. I'm going to put that back in there. I'm going to stow these away till the day when I'm going to open them and try them. Here's the other box. Come here. Oh, let's see now. Ah, oh, there's Hoagie asking me another question. Um, are limiting the number of bottles for each customer or could one potentially buy the whole stock? It depends on which release it was. Uh, yeah, maybe it says on here, limited limits, for example. There were some that were limited one per customer. Uh, you know, they, they'd have, for example, cases. Um, there's one case of Glenn Roth's 25 year old for $664.99 per bottle. Uh, Canadian Club 42 year old Chronicles issue number two, $289.99. I did not buy one this year because I know we still have last year's 41 year old Chronicles is still on the shelf uh, from last year. Um, what's a really expensive one? Oh, well, uh, Glen Rothis was the, I think it was the worst. Uh, the most expensive that is. Uh, let's see now. I generally went towards the uh, less expensive, but there are some bottles that were, you know, limited one per customer and others you could buy two or three. And it just says how many cases of each they had here. They have one or two cases of each bottle and of course some bottles are more desirable than others and I naturally have a couple of them that are more desirable just because I was only the 12th in line and I thought that there was one or two bottles I wouldn't be able to get because I was the 12th but the people ahead of me did not choose the bottles that I wanted so it was good um, messages held for review Um, okay. I'll sub if you take a shot. Well, I, I have a Glen Cairn going with the 20 year old, uh, 20 year old, uh, 90, which is 45% uh, alcohol by volume, Canadian corn whiskey, 20 years in the cask. And I'm sipping it. I shouldn't have to do tricks to get people to sub for me. I did enough of those in the past. <laughs> uh, Hoagie says, yesterday we had the Diageo special release day in Europe. Oh, that must have been fun. Got all kinds of really good things like Klein Leash and, um, oh, uh, Dai Lu Lane and, uh, oh, Diageo. Mm. A lot of good Diageos. Make your wife leave again. <laughs> She's already gone. How can I do that? <laughs> you were the first dislike. Well, you know what? I really don't have a lot of patience for you. So I'm not going to read your comments anymore. I'm going to leave them there. But I'm not going to read them. How's that? Let's go back to the pop-out chat again and see what's going on. How many people in line? Well, ahead of me, there were 11, and the total was about 30, 36, something like that. And, uh, of course, when the store opened at 930, anyone could just walk in and take anything off the shelf. But the people who were 
earlier in line could order their whiskeys and have the whiskey ready when the store opened at 9.30. Come on in, grab your whiskey. And I had the biggest basket. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Uh, Kilted Moose says hi. Hi. Um, whiskey Ace says we missed you. Okay, not too bad, says Captain 3D. No, that was only one store, though. There are several stores around. And this was not the flagship store. There are two flagship stores in the Victoria area. One is at Fort and Fowl Bay. The other one is in Langford. I don't generally shop at those. I shop at this one particular store that's in uh, sort of a more posh neighborhood where people have a lot of money and they sell more whiskey there than most stores around here. So they get uh, pretty good choices of, of what they can sell compared to stores that don't make a lot of money. I've been going to that store for many years um, since before when I lived in that area with Cindy. Um, and uh, I, I bought, uh, I bought a lot of whiskey there. And so they know me. So how many of these releases per year? One, one release per year. So this is the one for this year. And last year I was saving money to go to Scotland. So I didn't buy much. I bought a few bottles last year, but not like this year. This year I went all out. Um, Captain 3D says there's a Costco here that tends to have higher end bottles than others. Yeah, probably because they sell more. Makes sense. What else have we got here? Ah, <coughs> JPYZ is 23 year old. Um, this is probably a lot like the 35 year old. And the 35, I have one. From last year, I haven't. I've, I've opened it to send a sample to a friend, but I have not tasted it yet. So it has. It's a bottle like this one with one dram missing. So I'm going to do that one in the next next little while. So this is the 23 year old cast strength blend, 64.3 percent alcohol by volume. Yeehaw! This is gonna. This is gonna be a fabulous. Fabulous whiskey. I think this was the most expensive one in the bunch. JP Weiser's 23, yeah, $149.99. So $150. And there's like about $23 worth of tax on that. So it's about $175 out the door. This is the most expensive one from the bunch that I bought. I I could have gone for the almost three hundred dollar bottle of uh Canadian Club 42, but there will be plenty on the shelf. I can get it any time. This, uh, well, this, this probably won't sell out in no time either because there are still bottles of 35 on the shelf from last year. So that's all right. And what else have we got here? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. That Weiser's looks great. Oh, I think it's going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Have you had the Weiser's 18? Yeah, I've had the Weiser's 18, but the last time I had Weiser's 18 was like five or six years ago. It's, it's nice and light. It's refined. It's, well, you could say it's very smooth. But if you take Weiser's 18, two parts Weiser's 18, one part um, lot 40, the regular lot 40. It doesn't have to be a cast strength or age statement, just a regular lot 40. In two parts Weiser's 18, you got yourself some Weiser's legacy, which is fantastic. If I had the Weiser's 18, I would also buy some Lot 40 and add a little bit of Lot 40 to my dram of uh, Weiser's 18, and then Weiser's 18 will shine. By itself, it's a little, if I remember correctly, it's five or six years ago, was a little bit lackluster. Uh, yeah. Jay says, Captain 3D KNL has a store pick balcony single malt, single barrel that's pretty interesting. What you holding there, Langevulin? 
Oh, <laughs> no, it's not a Lagavulin. What I'm holding here is a Port Eskeg. If you can see that, Port Eskeg, 10 year old. So I don't believe it's a Lagavulin. I'm pretty sure it's more like uh, uh, Kalila, perhaps. Uh, I don't think, I think it's one of these uh, non uh, distillery expressions or, yeah. So no distillery expression or, or what would, uh, it, there's non H statement and there's no distillery NDS, uh, no distillery statement. Uh, oh, fine print here. Fine print. Here we go. Uh, our 10th anniversary bottle features three distinct styles of whiskey from the distillery on the Northeast coast of Isla and near the village of Port Eskeg. That gives it away, doesn't it? Uh, just 33 casks have been used, bringing together the classic refill American oak hogsheads used in Port Eskeg, 100 proof with both fill, first fill bourbon casks, rare Exolera sherry casks. This combination creates a balance of richness and smoke tied together by Port Eskeg's signature elegance. Uh, UK chief medical officers, please savor responsibly 55.85% alcohol by volume. That's a little bit higher than drinking strength, but I would drink it at that strength if it's, uh, you know, easy going enough. Yep, it's 10 years old. Uh, anniversary edition Port Escape. Yep, most probably Kalila. Yeah, that's what I thought. Most probably. And moving on. Ah, oh, <laughs> this one is Canadian. This is local. Uh, this is Low and McKinnon Cocoa Aged Single Malt Whiskey. Now, Low and McKinnon has made some really fantastic whiskeys in the past. I had one in the in the past year that I bought from last year's um, whiskey re uh, premium spirits release. It was a uh, Chocolate malt. And the Lowen McKinnon chocolate malt was so good that it was like a Glenmorangie signet. It was just fantastic. And as soon as I opened the bottle, I mean, I had this thing for eight or nine months under my bar, and I opened it, and it was so good, so fabulous, fantastic, that I ended up buying, going back to the shop, and finding one bottle left from months earlier, there was one bottle left from this premium spirits release. And I just grabbed it on the spot. It was just, it had to be mine because it was the last bottle. And it was just lingering there on the shelf and waiting and waiting and waiting for me. This one here comes with whiskey chocolate made by aging 100% cocoa mass with Lauren McKinnon single malt whiskey. Oh, there's even a bit of chocolate in here, this, this little sample. Oh. This is going to be nice. So it's made in British Columbia, traditionally batch distilled, 43% alcohol by volume. Thomas Haas collaboration. So I guess Thomas Haas is a chocolatier. Uh, when making Lauren McKinnon whiskey, uh, aged with cocoa from Vancouver's renowned cho chocolatier Thomas Haas, this Lowen McKinnon Collaboration Single Malt Whiskey offers notes of bitter chocolate, subtle sweet spices, and vanilla exceptional cocoa adds depth and richness to the premium single malt. Lot number 10419. It doesn't say which bottle number it is, but uh, I'm going to come to this more blindly when, you know, in the, in, in the future. And I'm just going to taste it as it is without reading the tasting notes. By the time I get to this, it'll be several months, uh, several months in the future. Yeah, nice color on the McKinnon. Yes, it's low in McKinnon makes some excellent juice. Ah, okay, what do we got here? Pike Creek. Canadian whiskey aged 21 years, finished in Oloroso sherry casks, 45% alcohol by volume, 21 years old. 
Pike Creek, you know, there's the regular Pike Creek, which is uh, finished in um, rum casks. And I've been getting, there was a European oak uh, edition that I tasted not long ago. I don't know if that video has gone public yet, but I tasted it not long ago from last year's release. And this is this year's Pike Creek finished in Oloroso sherry casks. Yeah, this is also from the uh, Northern Border Collection. 21-year-old select oak age Canadian whiskey finished in Oloroso sherry for a complex and luxurious experience. This whiskey brings together Pike Creek's signature smooth style with hints of vanilla, dried fruit, spices, drawn from the Oloroso sherry. Bottle number 2682 of 4410. So 2,682 out of 4,410 bottles. So this is a fairly limited edition. Yeah. What is this? Oh, Gooderham and Warts, 19 year old, 49 Wellington. Another Canadian whiskey. Um, Ogie Bear. Okay, my bed's calling. Take care, Quig, and all of you have a great stream. See you around. Good night, Hoagie. Nice cut. Yeah. Okay, what's it say on this one? I got another good around in Warts, the 11 Souls from last year's uh, release. We didn't get that on the island, so I had to buy it from Alberta, but I'll get to that eventually. Uh, uh, 19, 1891, George Gooderham commissioned what would become one of Toronto's most iconic landmarks, the Flatiron Building at 49 Wellington Street East. For 60 years, it served admirably as headquarters for Gooder Ammon Warts, inspired by the building's striking and uh, red brick exterior. This complex four-grain whiskey includes red winter wheat and is infused with red oak staves for a luxurious finish of warming spices. This is going to be nice. They, their uh, core range is... Uh, their their core whiskey is a four grain whiskey. It's 19 years old. Four grain blend with red winter wheat. This is going to be interesting. 49% alcohol by volume, so it packs a punch. Uh, Andrew Squirrel. Is it Squirrel or Spirel? Spirel. It looked like Squirrel. I'm sorry. Um, I have that bottle. It's really good. Okay, so that's the gooder ham. And Don Holland saying, thanks, going live at Food Quig. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime, anytime. It's my pleasure to go live. When I can, when I have the time, when I'm sober enough. Oh, 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 oh this one here. This one here. Probably the most sought after Canadian whiskey. Lot 40 cask strength. And this one here is it's the third edition. This is a non H statement. It says bottle number 3,591 out of 5,060. 57% alcohol by volume. This is the non H statement. It's this year's release. So, you know, the premium spirits release in British Columbia, that's when you'll get bottles like this. And you won't get them before that day, which was today. Um, crafted in small batches, Lot 40 is rye whiskey at its simplest form. Corby Spirit and Wine Limited, Toronto, Ontario. Okay. Yeah, this one is uh, highly sought after. I might be able to get a second bottle at some point, like I did it in the last couple of years. Um, I kept the bottle for myself from the uh, 2017 edition and the 2018 edition. And when I went to the UK, I gave uh, a 12 year old to someone and I gave an 11 year old to someone. Uh, whiskey Ace says he's kind of bored with most of his whiskey. The stuff you're showing is inspiring. <laughs> yeah. 
Don Holland says, lot 40 cast strength, no age. I will have to stick with my 11 and 12s. Yeah, well, I have uh, about one third of a bottle left of the 11. <laughs> I have no 12 left. That's long gone. But um, this, we'll see how it is. I remember the 12 being better than the 11. I still have some 11. It's, it's, it's all right, but it's not like the 12. The 12 was really something special. What did this baby cost me? And lot 40 cast strength, $89.99. Well, that's better than last year when it, the 11 year old was $99.99. And if I remember correctly, the 12 year old was like $69.99 or $79.99. It was a bargain, it was a steal. But this is the, uh, the new one. So yeah, give it a try, you know. See how it goes. So that's the lot 40 cast strength for 2019. What else have we got here? Oh, yeah. Here's another Canadian whiskey. Another JP Weiser's Seven ba Rebels, it says. I was about to read Seven Barrels, but it's Seven Rebels. Okay, and Whiskey Ace says you should pick up the standard Lot 40 again. Who's afraid of Eric Narding? Oh, that's your name. Okay, I'm sorry. Do you prefer rye or scotch? It depends on my mood. Sometimes I like a rye if I just want to drink. Things like... Uh, Alberta Premium, fantastic rye. Um, it's uncomplicated. It's really good. It's cheap. I like it. Scotch is more something to to go into the subtleties and and the nuances and and to to experience everything that you can nose and taste. Where rye is just drink and enjoy rather than analyze and try and pick out all the flavors. So it's a different thing. If I want to concentrate on drink, concentrate when I'm having a whiskey, I'll go for scotch. If I just want to have a drink, rye. I drink a lot of Canadian whiskey, as you can probably guess. Uh, and Whiskey Ace says, Old Forester rye will have to do for now. It's fine. Old Forester is great. What's the story with this Weiser's? Oh, I'm going to find out. There's probably there's a little blur here. It says, uh, this bold blend pays tribute to the seven Canadian whiskey pioneers who defined it from the start, featuring smoke and spices in a blend of seven distillates finished in virgin oak and Speyside casks with notes of embers, toasted malts, vanilla, cinnamon, and spice. 49.8% uh, alcohol by volume, which is nice for a Canadian whiskey. And it's in collaboration with BC Liquor Store. So this is a BC Liquor Store exclusive, this Seven Rebels. Uh, you can't get it anywhere else except in British Columbia. It's called the Seven Rebels Rare Cask Series. And it comes in the square bottle, like so many other J.P. Weiser's uh, premium editions. Ah. And okay. And Andrew Spirell says the Alberta premium cask strength rye is good. Just got a bottle this week. Oh, that's. <laughs> Just a moment. Don Holland says, when both rye and scotch. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's both rye and scotch. Exactly. And who's afraid of Eric? Ner Nerding says, please like the Quigs live stream, people. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. We got nine likes already. 
got 23 people watching. We've been going on for 39 minutes. Okay. Graham Young says, hi, Food Quig. Glad you got a good haul. Our Canadian release is not until November in New Brunswick. Oh, end of November in New Brunswick. See, it varies by province, right? Do you have one year Wayne? What is Wayne? Um, Wiser's something, something, something. I, I don't know, Don. Uh, I don't know what Wayne is. Um, I've never heard of it. What it, if if that's what it's called? If it's called Wayne, I've never heard of it. Okay. Ah, I had to get this one. Green spot, Shadow Montalena. Two years ago, I had a green spot wine finish, which was the Shadow Leoville Barton, just absolutely blew the top of my head right off. This one might do the same. I had to have another wine finish green spot because that other one was fabulous. It's finished in Zinfandel wine cask, triple distilled Irish whiskey, Shadow Montalena, Calistoga, Napa Valley. Ah. And who's afraid of Eric Nording says, I've watched nearly all of your videos. Is it true you've had one glass of whiskey each day for 12 years? You said this, I believe, in one of your videos. Oh, sometimes more than one glass. <laughs> yeah, I drink every day. I do. It's rare. It's extremely rare that a day goes by that I don't have a drink. And I love every minute of it. Green spot, says Whiskey Ace. <laughs> And Donald ha Don Holland says Eric Nording. Okay. Okay. Shadow Montalina, Napa Valley. What does this one say? Zinfandel wine. Their origins rooted in history, two stories of Irish endeavor and enterprise intertwine and together are the inspiration for a special edition whiskey. Green spot Shadow Montalena, uh, initially matured in traditional sherry and bourbon casks. Green spot Chateau Montalena was then finished in Zinfandel wine casks, adding an exciting new dimension to the single pot still Irish whiskey already renowned for its excellent quality. There you go. So I grabbed that instead of, well, I also have the, uh, the Lestau edition um, red breast. So I got a red breast and a green spot, both special. Okay. Here's one that you may have been waiting for. You might be able to guess what it is already. Here we are. I got the Karchus. Karchus is the one that sells out the, the earliest, the fastest, the quickest. Ah. Oh, is the Lustau worth 70 USD? What did we pay for it? Hold on. Um, Red Breast Lustau. Yeah, that was $94.99. Canadian, that's about $70 American, yeah. Um, Shadow Montalena was one hundred and five dollars or one hundred four ninety nine, so it's a little. It's about uh, one hundred and sixteen dollars out the door. Yeah, that's worth it. If it's as good as the uh, Chateau Leoville Barton, it's definitely worth it. But I got the Karchus. This was the one that I was really after, the Lafroy Karchus, which is triple wood but at cast strength. 59.5% uh, alcohol by volume. Yes. It's rare. There was only one case of six for the store that I went to. 
one case of six and I was number 12 in line and I thought, Oh, number 12 in line, maybe somebody ahead of me is going to get them all, you know, but it was limit one per customer. So maybe the people who were ahead of me didn't like Pete. Maybe they were Sherry bomb people. I don't know, but I managed to get this. <laughs> yes. Uh, Kilted Moose says nice. So when a food quick picked up a bottle of, the cast strength triple wood at the distillery back in August. Oh, at the distillery. Yeah, this stuff was not available at the distillery when I first, when I went there. I ended up getting a 10-year-old cast strength, and, oh, I finished it already. That's the only one that I brought back from Scotland in my bags that I opened because I had one from, um, I had a sample that was sent to me by, uh, by Eric goes by oh I'm bad with names I'm terrible with names I know his name is Eric I won't say his last name because I don't think he shared that with people on YouTube um, oh doesn't it hurt when you can anyway a good friend sent me a sample and after I tasted the sample, I had the bottle right in front of me. I opened the bottle and that thing didn't last long. Oh, and for whiskey, Ace Karchus hasn't popped up in town yet. Yes, it will be nice. <laughs> Sneerson says, not over yet, Don Holland. How you doing, bro? And whiskey Ace says, I keep running into Lafroy batch 10 cast strength. Yeah, well, I can't get that here. There's a cast. There's a. There's a uh, batch eleven now. There was a batch ten. It was Lefroy ten. Now there was a batch eleven. Kilted Moose is saying a food quick. Don't think it's available anywhere else in the UK. Distillery only, as far as I know, over here. It's rare stuff. This is hard to get. Uh, this is the first. The second time I've ever gotten Karchus in a liquor store. I had it once uh, several years ago, and it was a diff totally different edition. Yeah, and Karchus is of similar quality to the cast strength. Well, there you go. How much was that? I think it was a bargain, $99.99, so exactly $100. So $115.09 out the door with the, with the bottle deposit. Worth it. Definitely worth it. And that's it for the spirits release. However, when I was at the spirits release and I had already ordered all of these whiskeys and I said, oh, I'm going to take a chance. Hope I get the car just hope I get this. Hope I get that. Hope I get that. Hope I get that. I walked in when they just opened up the store. And I was looking at the last year's release. They had a few bottles left on one shelf. The shelf was about so wide and about, yeah, well, about that high, you know, and it wasn't very big. But there was a few bottles of 41-year-old Canadian club, and there was some Rocktown rye, Rocktown Arkansas rye, and there was uh, a couple other things that uh, didn't sell too fast and didn't sell too well, but they were still left over on the very bottom shelf of last year's releases was this. Yeah. Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye. And you know what this cost? It was a bargain. $52.99 plus $5.30 liquor tax and $2.65 uh, GST, 10 cent bottle deposit, $61.04 out the door. As soon as I saw this, there was another guy eyeing it too. He says, Ooh, I like Alberta Premium. Oh, this must be really good. And there was like about six bottles there. And he was grabbing one. And I said, Okay, you're mine. So the first thing I did before I even went for for all of these, the first thing I did was I bought one of these 
took it out to the car and came back to get my order. <laughs> this is the cast strength rye. Now, there's also um, a 20 year old Alberta premium rye, which I asked them to get last week. And that should come in in a week or two. This was not part of the premium spirits release, which I think it should have been, but it wasn't. This was just there. It just happened to be available at the time. So I got this one as well. This was a bonus onto the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, where are we now? Oh, you guys made comments while I was doing that. Uh, don't think it's available anywhere else in the UK distillery. Okay, right. Whiskey Ace says Karchis is of similar quality. Yeah, Don Holland says good mark drinking Glengarry 1995. Mmm. Yeah. Um, Glengarry. I love Glengarry. And Eric Nording says, is it? Okay. Will you make a video of your favorite whiskey of 2019? Also, are you in Instagram? No, I don't do Instagram. All of my time is spent on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, I don't do Instagram. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, um, I will be mentioning my favorite whiskey that I tasted in 2019. Um, I've decided what it is already, unless I find something between now and the end of the year that's better. Um, grand total for the haul. Stephen Lang wants to cut to the chase. And grand total with taxes and everything. $1,329.31 Canadian. That's 1329.31. Plus, of course, the Alberta Premium Cast Strength, which was another one, 6104. So grand total, um, 1390.35. So $1,400 Canadian. Yeah, that was fun. I don't have to buy whiskey for a while now, but <laughs> would that stop me? <laughs> okay, that was the haul. Snearson's asking me what's in the glass. Oh, I'm drinking Highwood 90, 20 year old. Um, and that's what's in the glass. And Alberta <laughs> premium cast strength, boom. Yes, very much boom. Um, pretty awesome haul for sleeping in. Yeah, I think I did all right. <laughs> wow, now you can't get that AP over here in Scotland. Enjoy. No, you can't. This is Canada only. Can you get Alberta Premium at all in Scotland? Or But this is a special one. This is the cast strength. And they also released a 20-year-old. So the 20-year-old, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to get a bottle. And I know you're an admirer of Lafroig 18-year. I can get it for 195 Canadian. Do you think it's worth it? The question is, is it worth it to you? Uh, it's excellent. Lafroig 10, Lafroig 18 is probably the nicest, most refined, most enjoyable Lafroig I've ever had. Never mind the Lafroigs that, that, you know, blow your doors off. This is subtlety. It's just beautiful. It's balanced. There's other Lafroig where, you know, you'll go and say, okay, Lafroig triple wood, boom, Lafroig 10 cast strength, you know, blow the top of your head off. But Lafroig 18 is, to me, it's worth a couple hundred bucks. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely worth it. 
to me. The question is, is it worth it to you? I would buy some if I could find it. The last time I got Lafroy 18 was, was more than a year ago. And Captain Three Days says, nice day shopping, Quig. Not bad for missing the alarm. No, not bad at all. There's Cato saying, last whiskey I purchased was three years ago. I have whiskey for 20 years. Good on you, my friend. Good on you. I wish I did. I've got about a year, year and a half without buying whiskey. I can go for a year, year and a half. Maybe longer if people send me samples and bottles. But um, on Kilted Moose says, we can't get any Alberta, Alberta premium in Scotland. Okay. Wow. That's a Canadian thing. I think they can get it in, in the States some places. Good thing the spirits release is only once a year. Yes, Stephen. <laughs> you got that right. If you'll excuse me, and we've been going on for 55 minutes. I'm going to get me another glass of water, and I'm going to do the quick thing. You know what the quick thing is, right? Uh, put this AP back in the box. I'm going to get me another glass of water and pour me another dram. I'll be right back to chat. Okay. Yeah. I'm back, so to speak. Okay. So Kilted Moose is saying, so what are we all drinking this evening afternoon? Huh. And quick step out for a quig? Yes, that's exactly right, DJ Beacon. I'm back in. I'm right here. I gotta think of something to drink. Oh, okay. I can do one of these, or I can do one of those. I can do one of those. Hmm. Something really special, maybe. Something uncommon, perhaps. Ah. Hmm. Oh. Here we go. I got a nice one. This is what I'm going to be drinking now. It's old Pulteney, 2004. Um, one of 281 bottles. It's uh, bottled at 50.2% alcohol by volume. This was the BC Spirits release last year. Uh, this was from the Spirits release last year. It's an old Pulteney single cask. Cask number 229. And I did a review, or I, I made a video about this one recently, and it's really nice. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm going to 
That's what I got. What was the ABV on that one? Yeah, 50.2. So just drinking strength. I think I'm going to uh, enjoy this one while I just chat and monologue with you all. And starting with the GM 10-year original and then to the Signet. Oh, okay. Glenn Warrenji. Nice. Uh, pushed the beat out tonight and having a 21-year-old Klein Leash. Oh, Moose, you're making me jealous. And Bourbon Professor says, Town Branch, Kentucky, single malt in my glass. Oh, nice. Whiskey Ace says, well, what Kato, what did Katie, Kato say? Last whiskey I purchased was three years ago, 20 years old. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll aspire to that such heights, but... I'm a relative newcomer. I've only been into the hobby maybe five years. Before that, I would drink whiskey and not know anything about it. Just drink whiskey. And drink it neat exclusively and not with water and just get shit-faced and puking. Well, no, not always. I, I've been drinking whiskey since the 1980s, but... I've only really gotten into it the last, I don't know, five or six years. So, you know, I'm a relative newcomer. It may take me a while to get a 20-year supply. <laughs> um, yes, the wall is leaning. It has been leaning for quite some time, but there is one part that is kind of leaning the other way. So what I plan to do is get to the wall and then maybe wedge a couple more bottles in between this row and that row, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it's leaning, but if you look on it, on the far side, it's not leaning. That last row on, on that end is straight. It's straight at an arrow, straight up and down. But they just sort of, as I was building, it just sort of, okay, I'm not a professional bricklayer, all right? So things are going to be a little bit askew, but it's been leaning since it since I built it. <laughs> ah. um. Oh, okay. Uh, Eric Nording wants to know why do I call myself food queen? All right, we got time. I got a whiskey. I can tell you. Back when we were kids, my sister had a nickname for me. She called me Quiggy. And that sort of shortened itself to Quig. And I don't know if you're familiar with Mad Magazine, but it was popular back in the 70s when we were kids. And it was like a comic book, you know. And they would do these movie parodies. I don't know if you remember the movie The Exorcist. Well, the movie The Exorcist was, you know, where you had this priest that had to get rid of the devil and this child and so on and so on and so on. And there was one scene where these two priests are walking through a park and they're discussing exercising the devil out of this child and so you got you got them talking and you know balloons above their heads saying what they're saying and then in the margin there were these two little jewish rabbis going going <laughs> so i called myself fat quick um as in not desirable quig uh and when I first started my YouTube channel in 2006, I was fat quick. People, some people came up with original ideas where the feckwig came from. The feckwig channel is still in existence, actually, but I don't do much with I put up a music video um, last week, I think it was, from the... Uh, 
music festival that I went to. And I got a few more music videos I might put up on there still. But that was my original channel. And back, I guess, 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, uh, my wife and I started going to uh, restaurants and, and reviewing restaurants. We started talking about the food. And um, those food videos were doing so good that uh, I created a spin-off channel and called it Food Quake rather than Fat Quake. So the Food Quake channel was started back then. And uh, eventually, eventually the F Food Quake channel I would have a dram of whiskey at the end of a meal in a restaurant. I started doing this. I would, I would want to have a dram after dinner. So I'd have a dram of whiskey after dinner. And slowly with time, I started getting more interested in the whiskey. And the Food Quick channel, I never bothered to change the name. It was just getting views. And I uh, eventually we got less interested in... Uh, uh, reviewing restaurants and then well eventually we broke up she went her way I went mine we're still friends to this day but uh, one of the the biggest video that I ever made the one that had the most views was the one where we're breaking up and I'm I'm uh, I'm nosing and tasting uh, a Lafroy 10 and that thing went viral some what was it a year ago something like that and um, yeah, the Food Quick channel is, is still the Food Quick channel. I don't want to change the name because it's done pretty well for itself up to now. So I'm going to keep the Food Quick channel as the Food Quick channel. Um, but yeah, that, now you have it in a nutshell where the Food Quick came from. It was a nickname that my sister called me. It was a, a comic in Mad Magazine. And... The fact became food because it was a spin-off channel and we were talking about food rather than just me. So there you go. Uh, I missed a few comments here. Uh, now you know why I call myself Food Quig. Just finished a pour of Old Forester rice and whiskey ace. And Mike Jorgensen says, Woodford Reserve Kentucky bourbon. Ooh, nice. Yes. Very nice. With two ice cubes. Okay. Going to ice ball. Going ice ball. Oh, okay. Ice ball. Don Holland says to Whiskey Snearson, Grey Cup on deck. Cheers, bro. Cheers, bro, says Michael Jack Jorgensen. Okay. Um Alfred E. Newman, yes, <laughs> DJ Beacon, yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, last year's gem, good stuff at Food Quig. Oh, are we talking about the, oh, the, this, this Pultney, yes, <laughs> yes. Or were we talking about something else? Um, yes, uh, thanks for sharing the origins of the story. Interesting. Oh, you're welcome. Now you know. Famous Lefroy 10 video, yes. Pizza. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, pizza. <laughs> Incredible value, says Whiskey Ace. Captain 3D says, Night Quig off to see a climbing exp competition. Okay, have a good night, Captain 3D. It was good, great to have you with us. Um, you can't change the name now. It's become, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I can't change the name now. It's become iconic. Yeah, exactly. It's gotten too big. You can't change it. I never thought of changing it. It just sort of morphed. It sort of evolved, and it's, it's evolving still. I sometimes do food videos, but really rarely. You know, like if I go on a trip, we did a couple in London and a couple in um, in in Scotland when I was on that trip. 
thank you for answering my questions. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Uh, please like the quick stream. Okay. Whiskey Ace says, I've been kind of wary of Woodford lately since the two new offerings released wheat and mapped three whiskeys. Both aren't really my cup of tea or malt. Uh, well, for Woodford, I like Woodford. I do have a Woodford coming up eventually. Um, the one that I like was the Double Oak. It's fantastic whiskey. But I'm not such a big bourbon guy. I mean, I'll enjoy a bourbon, but I'll generally go for Scotch or Canadian or Irish. But I do have some bourbons coming up. I do. Well, you know, there were a lot of bourbons at, at this release that I went to today, but you can see that I bought what? Uh, three scotches, two Irish, and like nine Canadian. Three, two, yeah. So that's kind of where my thing is. Besides, can, Canadian is cheaper than America than than anything else around here. So you get more bang for your buck. Um, malt. Okay, so that was malt. And Donner Pass says hi, Quig. Oh, hi, Donner Pass. Good to have you with us. Thanks for joining. Um, wasn't Phil and Deepa's video amazing? Yes, it was <laughs> incredible. The stuff that they brought home from the UK equals the top of my bar. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, whiskeys that I've had for, you know, up to a year. And uh, they, their, their table top was like my entire bar. <laughs> I don't have that many open whiskeys right now. Most of them are sealed because this year I've been getting so many samples from people. Uh, I've tasted so many samples. I've tried so many samples that opening the bottles that I've bought um, doesn't happen as quickly as it did before. So I've got about, I've got about 96 bottles sealed and I've got about, uh, I don't know, 45 bottles open, plus, of course, my um, my 11 Infinity bottles. <laughs> so, yeah. Whiskey Ace says the malt is trash. Okay, so Woodford malt. Well, I've never seen that, so I, I just know that I like the Woodford double oak. Ah, Stephen Lang says, enjoy the breakfast haggis video from Scotland. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was my haggis eggs Benny in, um, in uh, Port Ellen, the Port Ellen Hotel, I believe it was called, uh, where we did that. <sighs> What's one bottle of scotch you couldn't live without? Hmm. Well, I would generally add, answer that one with the one that's in front of me right now. But uh, I have to think, which bottle of scotch did I buy repeatedly? And did I buy the most of in the past? And of course, I'm looking over there. I'm looking at Ardbegs and Lafroigs and Bunnahavens and Obens and Glengoins and Kilcarens and, you know, all kinds of things. Johnny Walker Green and things like that. Um, K9 Nick says, hey, you old thought. <laughs> Just passing through, hey. <laughs> Greetings. To New Zealand. <laughs> and Don Holland says Old Pulteney. Donner Pass Whiskey says Lafroy 10. Hey, how are they hanging? Oh, they're hanging loose, you know. They're, they're always hanging loose. Bourbon Professor says, I'm working on employing some bigger sample bottles for sharing with friends to the north. Oh, I'll drink to that. <laughs> mm. Oh. 
with just a few standard drops of water. This is heavenly. This 2004 old Pulteney. Nice. Very nice. But is there one bottle of scotch that I could not live without? You know, my answer to that question is, there is no one bottle that I could live without. Because if there was one bottle that I could live without there, I could have I could replace it with 10 other bottles that are equally desirable or equally amazing, equally interesting to me. So there isn't one bottle that I could do without. Because, you know, there are so many bottles available in the world that I can't get here. Like, for example, Lefroy 10-year-old cask strength. I can't get it here. So I will do without. Uh, exactly. Um, cheers, mate, says Don Holland to Eric Nording. Raymaster. There's Raymaster. Hi, Quig. Hope you're having a good dram. Oh, fabulous dram. Old Pulteney, 2004. Uh, single cask. Cask number 229. 52.2% alcohol by volume. One bottle of 281 from last year's um, BC Premium Spirits release. I've had this a year. It's good. I could have got some more old Pulteney um, single cask. Now it comes in a square bottle rather than the uh, oval tube or a square box. And I could have got some, but, you know, I wanted to go for more Canadian and less expensive. I mean, I spent $1,400 on whiskey today. And I was going to go spend another 100 I went across the highway from the liquor store to the bottle depot where I got rid of boxes full of empty bottles because I had a lot of empty bottles. My, my, box, my tote boxes were full. So I got... Uh, two of these tote boxes to put empty bottles in. They were both full. So, whoop, there goes the power bar. <laughs> okay. Power bar crisis solved, I think, maybe, sort of. Yes, okay. Power bar crisis solved. Um, so I have these boxes. And so I went and did everything. I combined my trips, right? So I went to the, first of all, to the liquor store to get my place in line and then make my order. And then I went home and I took my laundry uh, or a dry cleaning. I had a lot of neckties. I hadn't had dry clean in 10 years. I got my summer jackets. I had to get them dry clean too. So I did that. Dry cleaner is right near the liquor store. So I get to the liquor store, pick up my whiskey, and then I went to the bottle depot where I could take all my empty bottles and get rid of them. You know, and I think I got like $12 for all my empty bottles. I had two, two of these boxes full. And then I went to the Caledonia Distillery where they make the macaronis. And I was going to get their new whiskey, their first spirit that was made at the Victoria Caledonian Distillery. Um, that's old enough to be called whiskey. And they told me about six weeks ago that it would be ready at the end of October. And I thought, okay, well, it's November. They should be ready. I got there to the uh, visitor center, and they said, oh, well, it's not ready yet, and it probably won't be out until January. So I'm thinking January. January, we've got the um, whiskey festival. So maybe they're going to you know, unveil it for the Victoria Whiskey Festival, which would be great because – Maybe then I can get a bottle. 
but I cannot get any Macaronis that's old enough to be called whiskey yet. That was brewed, that was made at the distillery here in Victoria. They still have some blends from, uh, they have an Isla blend, they have a, um, they have a Highland blend, they have a Speyside blend, and I think that's it. They have three blends. Uh, and I think it comes in various strengths. There's a cast strength, and then there's a standard 46% ABV uh, of each of those. And I've had them all. Uh, let's see now. Okay. 10 cast strength at Donner Pass Whiskey. Old school food quig live stream. Yes, this is cool. Thank you, Nick. Thank you very much. Donner Pass Whiskey says, got here a bit late. Have you already given the rundown on what you bought? Oh, yes, I did, Donner Pass. But I can go through a quick list before, it, rather than showing you all of them. Lafroy Karchus, triple, triple wood. J.P. Weiser's rare cask. J.P. Weiser's 23-year-old. Gooderham and Warts, 49. Uh, Pike Creek, 21-year-old Oloroso. 40 Creek, Victory. Central City, Lowen McKinnon, Coco. Lot 40, Cast Strength. Uh, Non-H statement. Highland Park, Valfather. Red Breast, Lustau, Irish Whiskey. Green Spot, Shadow Montalena. Wine finish. Port Askeg, 10 year old. And Alberta Premium Cast Strength. That's everything I got today. I was going to get a Macaloni's too, but that's all I got. And you can always watch this again because it's going to be on YouTube. Uh, you know, if you missed something and you wanted to see what the bottle looked like or something like that. Uh, Greg's whisk there's Greg's whiskey guide coming late here but hi from Paris uh, at food quig and everyone hi Greg Slanchova. and Greg says interesting have a sample of single sherry cast 2004 but first fill sherry to open gotta open it soon oh are we talking about uh, old Pulte? cool and who's afraid of Eric Nording saying uh, at Food Quick, hello from a Canadian in Ukraine. Oh, you're a far, long way from home. I've been spending a lot on scotch recently, unapologetically. How do you justify the expense? Well, I look at it this way. I don't do a lot of fine dining. I don't go out to bars. I don't spend a lot of money. I just have the basics, you know. I have I have my uh, my apartment. I have my um, groceries to eat. I have my electricity. I have my internet. That's what I spend my money on. And whiskey. But you see, I don't go on a lot of trips. Okay, I went to Scotland earlier this year, but that was special. I don't go on a lot of tri long trips. I might take a week off and go camping up island, which I'm going to do next year. I went to a whiskey fe a music festival a couple weeks ago. That was fun, but it was not an expensive, big, long trip. I have a small apartment. I try and find... I've always tried to find the cheapest rent that I could find. And even though Victoria is becoming an expensive city to live in, the, the rent where I am is still cheap because it's based on what it was when I moved in. If I was to try and get another apartment like this one, it would probably cost me several hundred dollars more a month. But we're limited. Every year they can only raise the rent 3%. So if I was to move from this apartment to another comparable apartment, it would probably cost me three or four or five hundred dollars more a month immediately. So I try and keep keep my rent costs low. 
okay, electricity costs the same amount no matter where you live. And, uh, and uh, my other expenses, what are they? Transportation doesn't cost me much. I walk to work. I walk two blocks to work. The taxi that I drive parks two blocks away from where I live. I own a car. Yes, I do. But I don't own an expensive car. I have a, what is it? My car is 25 years old. It's an old beater. It has almost 200,000 kilometers on it. It's, it looks like junk. Okay. It's not a, a fancy car. It's not expensive. It cost me very little to own it because it's been paid for a long, long, long time ago. And it gets my groceries and whiskey home. That's all I care about. And, and I may take a trip or two a year to go camping or to go to a festival or something. Yeah, I don't need a fancy car. I don't need a big ugly house. I live alone. My expenses are minimal. So there, therefore, as long as I can afford to have a roof over my head, I can do my transportation. I can get around. It's enough. What money I have left over, I can spend on something that I really like. I love to read, so I have some books. I love whis I love to drink whiskey. I enjoy whiskey very much. I think I enjoy whiskey more than anything else in the world. So that's how I can justify it. That's how I can justify spending thousands and thousands of dollars every year on this magical magical golden juice oh. it's cracking me up and making me all emotional no i'm doing it to myself this experience is something that you can't beat where was i <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. I justify the expense by saying I have enough of everything I need. This is on top of everything I need. This is something that I want. That's how I, I can justify it. I live alone. I have no dependence. I have no commitments except to myself. And this is a commitment I make to myself because it's something that gives me pleasure, gives me enjoyment. Oh, just a few drops of water, the nose on this thing is, ah, and it tastes wonderful too. Ah, okay, Greg says, all over the place, list man, way open, very open in a way. Marconi's, what was that? Laughing out loud. Oh, macaroni's. No, no, it's macaroni's. Um, macaroni is the name of the family that started this distillery here in Victoria, British Columbia. It's a small distillery. They just to get themselves started, they would get whiskeys from Scotland and they would blend them together and bottle them. Do I have any right now? Let me see if I have any. Uh, no. Sorry. I don't have any macaronis on me right now. I don't have any. I've, I've finished it all. And I don't have any bottles down there. <clears throat> Anyway, Macaloni is the name of the family that started the Victoria Caledonian Distillery. It's a local distillery. It's, in fact, the closest distillery to where I live. It takes five minutes to drive to it up the road. Okay. Uh, so Macaloni is, is, is an Irish name. Uh, this Macaloni guy went to Scotland and made whiskey and then he came back to Ireland and then 
the family immigrated to Canada and they started um, a whiskey uh, distillery. But to start off, they were taking whiskey from Scotland and blending it together into their own blends. They had an Isla blend. They had a, uh, they had a, they made a few blends, but they were also distilling their own. They had one called Macnabrack. That means son of malt in Scots Gaelic. I had a bottle of that. That was good. But now their own whiskey that's old enough to be called whiskey has been delayed. It was supposed to be uh, ready by now. But uh, they're saying now January. That's what I was told at the distillery this morning. So that's what macaronis is. Uh, thanks. Sounds like good stuff. Yes, old Pulteney. Yeah. Donor Pass Whiskey. Sounds like you have rent control. That's good. Yes, yes. Uh, if it, it's 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 just right the way it is. I got this place just after Cindy and I and I broke up. I got this place just before the housing market went batshit crazy here in Victoria. So I'm I'm lucky. Very lucky. And Snearson, oh, thank you, Snearson. Slanchava, <laughs> thank you for the super chat. That's beautiful. Um, Greg's whiskey says, uh, "Passion, yes." Cheers, buddy. Yes. Well, well said. Quig says, "Vegas art." I forget what I said. Oh, maybe I was talking about my uh, my living expenses and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Raymaster says, "Quig, your boxes on the wall." Look a little tilted. I hope they don't fall down. No, I think I think they're balanced okay. They're leaning on the wall. They're going to be fine. Let me have a look. Yeah, I think it's just the angle of the light. That... Uh... Yeah. 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 No. <sighs> They're mostly okay. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> Don Holland says to Whiskey Snearson, good stuff, big hearted man. Uh, yeah, says no nonsense, Whiskey. Oh, Vin, thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Vin. This is a big pleasure. We've got 20 people watching still after going for an hour and 32 minutes. Yippee. Everyone needs one indulgence. There you go. No Nonsense says, what's up, Food Quig? Well, I, uh, to find out, you may want to go back to the beginning of this stream when it's finished. Um, because I went to a thing called the uh, Van, the British Columbia Premium Spirits Release. And the Premium Spirits Release is this thing that happens once a year, and they're, they feature harder-to-find bottles uh, and things that you can't get any other time of the year once a year. And so I went to this thing today to pick up a lot of whiskey. <laughs> Hey, everyone else says no, no nonsense. Jason Coates says, hey, Vin. Okay, I'm a little behind on the, uh, a little behind on the chat, but the, that's nothing new for me, is it? Uh, uh, well, says, thank you for answering my questions. Okay, Greg says, oh, okay, thanks. First time I hear of this brand. Oh, yeah, Macaroni's. Yeah, okay, of course. Um, no nonsense says hi to Jason Coates. And Donner Pass says to Raymaster, wow. Now that you mention it, they do look like the leading wall of Quig. <laughs> okay. Uh, Greg says, so many Italians involved in whiskey, right? A lot of them in indie bottling business in the 80s. Crazy stuff really sometimes. Uh, yeah, but macaroni is Irish. It's not macaroni. It's macaroni. It's, uh, it sounds like an Italian name, but it's not really. They were originally Irish, moved to Scotland, moved back to Ireland, and moved to Canada. 
but yeah, there were there's there's Italians like Samaroli. I've heard of Samaroli, and there's a few others as well. Okay, not Italians, but Irish. Okay, you got it. You 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 did you did lean into that one. Uh, okay, Greg's whiskey says, "Are they empty? If not, how do you pick up those below without making a mess? They're all empty." Most of the bottles are long gone. <laughs> They're just empty. They're just leaning on the wall, and that's it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they don't make a mess. No, the, the whiskeys that are open, they're all on the bar over there. And that's, that's, that's just uh, for show. Uh, Who's afraid of Eric Norrie? says, do you watch like hockey? Who is a whiskey focused YouTuber you respect? Oh my goodness. Uh, no, I'm not into hockey at all. I'm sorry. Despite being from Montreal originally, I'm not a hockey fan. I don't, I don't really follow it. Um, Whiskey focused YouTuber that I respect. There are lots, lots of whiskey focused YouTubers that I respect. I watch several channels all the time. I'm a week behind because of that. I enjoy um, keeping up to date on, on whiskey related things there are so many channels that i can't really all of you who are watching here and who are in this chat right now who have a whiskey channel i respect all of you and i was get i respect anyone who's willing to share their whiskey experience there are a few channels out there that annoy me. I will not mention names. There are a lot of channels that I enjoy watching and that I respect. Everyone who's been on this chat is someone who I respect and watch regularly. That is, if you have a channel and you, you make videos. Um, so yeah, there, there are lots. I mean, Phil and Deepa, 3D Whiskey, um, there's Greg, of course, there's Vin PF, of course, there's the Whiskey Friend, there's Ralphie, there's, uh, Horse Learning, there's, my God, the list goes on and on. There's, there's, there's Aquavitae. There's, uh, it's just insane. So many channels, and there's so many channels coming and going and starting up and finishing up, and it's hard to keep track sometimes uh, to watch everything I want to. But I do place limits. I know I'm kind of being a hypocrite now because this particular stream has been going on for an hour and 38 minutes, but I don't watch streams or videos typically that last more than half an hour. If it's half an hour for me, it's a stretch. Okay, sometimes I might tune in on something that's happening when it's happening, like uh, Phil and Deepa's premiere of the stuff they brought back from Scotland. That's what started me on this. You know, they had a great big haul of whiskey that they brought home from Scotland. And I thought, well, I was at the whiskey store this morning, and I bought all this stuff at the uh, Premium Spirits release. So, yeah, I'm going to share that, and I'm going to share it live. And that's what I'm doing now. But if I saw a video like this one that had happened maybe two, three days ago, would I watch it? I would look at it and go, it's an hour and a half long. Forget it. I'm not watching that shit. So I find lives have to be at the moment. They have to be happening when they are happening. Pre-recorded lives, I find hard to, it's hard to make a commitment for a couple hours, especially when 
you work the long hours that I do and the time that you ha that you have to yourself during the weekend to be away from work and be away from people and just kick back and relax is kind of limited. So yeah, I, I don't generally watch things that are more than half an hour long, but I respect people for putting, for making videos about whiskey and about their passion, just like it's my passion to make whiskey videos. So yeah, I'm going on a little bit, but uh, where are we? <laughs> And Sneerson doesn't trust someone without an indulgent or vice or two. No hockey, Eric. CFL, says Don Holland. Okay, Canadian Football League. Um, okay. Uh, YouTubers I respect. Yeah, lots of them. Did you enjoy your trip to Austin, says Donner Pass. Uh, Don Holland says, no, okay. No nonsense whiskey, says the Greg's Whiskey Guide. Hey, man, still planning to do those cognacs in a video, haha, <laughs> maybe before at Christmas? Okay. I'm getting behind again. <laughs> it happens. Um, no nonsense, says uh, Austin was amazing. Wish I could have been there for longer. Oh, okay. And Greg says, hi, Vin, let me know when at No Nonsense, okay? Whiskey Sneerson says, Don Holland, yes, CFL, go Riders, okay? Let's give the guy who shows his passion some thumbs up, <laughs> guys. Thank you, Greg, thank you. 17 thumbs, it's not bad, you know. Got 18 people watching now still, so I'm holding somebody's attention. Uh, thanks. In more... Oh, Nick says, uh, I'm more of a coffee snob myself. Coffee is not a thing for me. It just makes me jumpy. It doesn't relax me. And if I'm going to fall asleep, let me fall asleep naturally instead of postponing the inevitable. Um, it's so hard to keep up with everyone these days. Yes, it is, Vin. I concur. It's... Uh, it's freaking impossible because there's always new channels showing up and they're all entertaining. They're all fun to watch. Mm. Oh, this stuff gets better as it goes along. Wow. Uh, so hard to keep up with everyone these days, especially agreed, especially when some go live for four hours. Well, I think I'm probably the record holder for that. I think I went live for 10 hours one time and then came back on for another two hours when I got booted off the system. So, but I'm not going to be that bad tonight. Um, Stephen Lang says, uh, Rob Whiskey in the Six. Yeah, he's got some good, good videos going. And uh, Don Holland says to Whiskey Snearson, what are you drinking, fella? Uh, okay, at Food Quick, you said you like books. I like books very much, too. What are you reading currently? Ah, currently. I'm usually into science fiction, but I drive a taxi, and I had a customer that I took to the airport, and she gave me this book, so I started reading it. It's called The Hundred-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared. <laughs> so I started reading that one uh, a couple days ago, and I'm a few pages into it. Yeah. Nice bedside reading. It's written by Jonas Jonasson, in case you care. So that's what I'm reading right now, but I've got... I, I usually read science fiction, so I've got a lot of science fiction stashed away. And I'll get to it all eventually, if I live long enough. <laughs> I've got enough books to read for about five years. Keep me entertained for five years, besides watching videos. I watch so much YouTube because it's hard to keep up. Um, here we go. And Sneerson says, 
It is an exciting time to be a Canadian whiskey lover. You do them justice over the years. I try. I try. Um, yeah, I try to do them justice. I think I think I do more Canadian whiskey uh, videos than anyone else does. There are others who touch on it, but you know, even though I love Scotch and Irish and Indian whiskey and whiskey from from anywhere, really. I like my bourbons too, you know. And, um, definitely, there's some great bourbons out there, and I love those as well. But I'm I've been finding myself focusing more on Canadian because nobody's doing it, or there are people who are doing it in limited quantities. And there's so much great Canadian whiskey out there. You know, you can talk about Lot 40, and that's it. But what about all those Wiser's expressions? What about Canadian Club? What about um, what about uh, Alberta Premium? What about Gooderham and Warts? What about Crown Royal? There's so many... So many expressions of these, and and the local ones too. There's Shelter Point here locally. There's Low and McKinnon, which has just got some fabulous expressions. Uh, who else does them? Who talks about them? I think somebody's got to do it. <laughs> it might as well be me. And because I enjoy these whiskeys. Yeah, okay, it might as well be me. Uh, and No Nonsense Whiskey says that Greg's Whiskey Guide. Haha, uh -huh, true. What did Greg say to that? Anyway, Donner Pass says, yes, Trini and C said they might go live tonight to do show and tell with what they bought today too. <laughs> that might be fun to watch. Well, I, I, I just did it. I, you know. Be fun to see what Trenny and C got. Um, maybe they got more. They're more. Uh, uh, C is more into bourbon, and Trenny is more into Scotch. So they'll probably concentrate more on the bourbon and the Scotch end of things from the same whiskey release. So maybe, maybe our uh, purchases can kind of complement each other. Because I stuck more of the Canadian, and I know that they're going to get lots of bourbon. They're going to get as much bourbon as they can because of C. And then Trenny does is more into Scotch. So, yeah, maybe there will be a couple of overlaps. So they'll probably have a lot 40, and they'll probably have the – maybe they'll have the Lafroy Karchus. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe – I know that they got this same old Pultney last year that I did. Um and that that would be interesting. Yeah, Trenny and C, they, they put on a good show. <laughs> so it would be interesting to see if they come on. Maybe I should get out of the way so that you guys can all watch them. I don't know. Uh, Sneerson says to Don Holland, I'm thinking a Wiser's 2018 commemorative series. Oh, you're drinking a Wiser's 2018. Ah, which one was that? Maybe I've had that one. Is that the uh, the one with the uh, the the, the 49, uh, 49th parallel kind of thing? I think I had that one. Uh, Greg says, "Cheers, buddy!" At Whiskey Snearson, happy I could put my hands on one bottle of it. Klein Leash fourteen on deck. Oh, Don Holland, Klein Leash fourteen is wonderful stuff. Very good. And K9 Nick says, that's because you're not used to coffee. I drink coffee at bedtime. Sleep like a top. <laughs> Good for you. I used to drink coffee, but I stopped drinking it about three or four years ago. It's just not. Uh, that's hilarious. Read it a year or two back. Oh, the, the book I got. Yeah. I never heard of it. I just had this customer that I took to the airport says, hey, do you like to read here? Have a book. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide says, fantastic book name. Well, hope it's good. So far, it's wonderful. 
I'm up to the point where the, the old guy steals the guy's suitcase and uh, he ends up in a, an abandoned uh, uh, railway station where some, some hermit lives there and they, they had dinner and they, and then the guy who he stole the suitcase from comes looking for it. Uh, and K9 next says that I've been reading Graham Masterton lately. Nuns cooking on barbecue, etc. Laughing out loud. Horror. <laughs> um, taxes on booze are so ridiculous in Canada. Why haven't you moved to Alberta? It would be nice to have at least one native English speaking taxi driver in Alberta. Ha, ah, hmm, ah. You know what? I'm I'm about nine and a half years away from retiring. I know the town. Even though it's expensive to live here and the taxes are stupid and the government is ridiculous and and you know if I were twenty years younger I would definitely consider moving. To Alberta but at this point in time I know the town I know my job I've got like nine years till I can retire and get a pension I don't want to start again I started again many years ago when I moved out west from Montreal and I found my little niche or my little rut depending on what you want to call it and uh I would uh, I would move to Alberta, um, but I I I know the town. I know how to make money here. If I was put in Alberta, I'd have to learn the whole thing all over again. And at my age, I don't want to start again. I want to just work till I can retire, and then just here's what here's my plan. If you don't know my plan yet, here's what it is. I'm gonna get me a little motorhome. I'm going to give up my apartment and everything in it. I'm just going to get a little motorhome, a, a van basically that's just big enough to live in. Got everything I need, but nothing more, nothing less. And I will travel wherever I want. This time of year, I'd be heading down to Mexico. I'd be down to, you know, uh, going to Cabo San Lucas or somewhere like that. Anywhere south, anyway, south of Tijuana, okay? And uh, in the summer... Summers, I'd be going north. I'd be up in the Yukon. I'd be up in the Yukon in the summer with 24 hours of sunlight. That would be fantastic. That's what I want to do. I want to be a nomad. I want to go wherever I like. And, you know, thanks to the Internet and thanks to YouTube, I know people all over the place. I can go visit people. And when they're tired of me, they can say, go on the road, get gone, you know. And I would do that I happily. Um, cause I've been on the internet for, since 1992. So we're talking almost 30 years. I know people from 30 years, of, well, I say 20, 28 years, 29 years on the internet. So I know people all over and, you know, I, I wouldn't mind just traveling around and visiting people. That would be a nice way to retire. That would be a good life. And I wouldn't get bored and I wouldn't want to go back to work. I would just want to travel and enjoy life and meet up with people. Travel, see new places, see new things. That's exciting. Okay. So, yeah, right now I don't want to move, but I probably will spend a lot of time in Alberta after I'm retired, definitely. Um, Sneerson says he'll join Don Holland with a Kleinleash. Oh, I wish I had some Kleinleash. Oh, do I have a compass box? Not open. <laughs> uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide, Canada Day, right? Uh, okay, we're talking about Canada Day. Greg's Whiskey Guide. 
Um, Peter White. Hey, Peter White. Missed your list. We'll watch the replay and catch it. Oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad you glad you joined me. And Greg's the 2018 Wiser was the next year. The 150 commemorative was 2017. Ah. Uh, the whiskey friend. Whiskey friend is here. Hi, Alan. At Food Quig. Hey, Quig, what's up? Oh, it was already up. I, I talked about all the whiskey I bought today at the premium spirits release for British Columbia. Um, K9 Nick says, just, just a laugh. Daughter looks after olds in a rest home. Uh, sure told me they give the old guys Viagra at bedtime. Apparently, it stops them rolling out of bed at night. <laughs> hey, it's preventative. It's good. Keeps them entertained, too, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and Greg's Whiskey Guide says, I fully understand you, Food Quick. We're getting old, too, for, for that. Yeah, okay. She told me he's okay. Cool, I like that. I think I think um, New Zealand is a progressive nation. I don't think we have that here. Uh, my ex used to work at an old folks home where they dealt with Alzheimer's, and she never mentioned Viagra. <laughs> Peter White says, uh, "Where will you stash your whiskey? Right here in this room." Uh, Don Holland says to Whiskey Sneerson, Lagavulin in 12, 2015, next. Smells good in on my hand. Oh, I had that bottle. That was a good one. Lagavulin in 12. I've got the um, 2014. I have the 2016 and the 2017. Uh, I'm going to taste those coming up. Uh, have you ever read Charles Bukowski? I think you might like him. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't read him that I know of. Um, K9 next says he'll get a four-birth camper to stash the booze. I don't know if I'll be carrying that much booze with me. It would be a hassle to go over the border. Uh, whiskey Friend says that Greg's Whiskey. Hey, Greg. Um, Greg says hi at the Whiskey Friends. Okay, so everybody's saying hi to each other. Don Holland says... Keep going, fellow. We love Quig. Thank you, Don. Thank, thank you very much. Donor Pass says, the whiskey friend. Hi, Ellen. Must be late where you are. Yeah, probably. And Greg says to Whiskey Snearson, I understand that Canada Day I have is from 2018. Oh, the Canada Day whiskey. Oh, okay. 2018. Was that the, was that the one? There was one that was a hundred was it a hundred and fifty year oh that would have been the 2017 where they had one bottle for each week of 150 years I never got one of those the whiskey friend says to Donner Pass midnight Tim midnight time still early okay midnight yeah okay I get it Greg's Whiskey Guide. I've tasted and loved both at Whiskey Snearson. Okay. Snearson says, can you recap what you got today? Missed the start. Okay. All right. I'll do a quick rundown. Forty Creek Victory. That's, that's one of them. Oh, get back in that box, you thing, you. Okay. This one here. Redbreast Lustau. I haven't had the Lustau yet. It was available last year, but not this year. Okay. Get back in the box. Next one. Highland Park, Valfather. I have had the uh, Valkyrie and the Valknut. 
and Valknut, uh most recently. I don't know if the video is up yet, but it should be going live uh, or should be going public soon. So we've got that on there. Okay. All right, the big box. JP Weiser's 23. Tenth anniversary Portis Keg, ten year old. Probably Kalila. Lauren McKinnon, cocoa aged, single malt. I'm hoping it's even got some chocolate here. I hope that's going to be as good as the uh, um, Lauren McKinnon chocolate malt, which was very close at least in my estimation, um, uh, close to Glenmore and G. Signet. Yeah. Lot 40 cast strength, non-age statement. This is this year's release. Gooderham and Warts, 19 years old with red winter wheat. That's called the 49 Wellington. Uh, get back in there. This is the 21 year old Pike Creek finish in Oloroso Sherry Casks. Pike Creek 21. That's not the regular one, which is the um, Pike Creek is typically a uh, rum finish, four, four grain rum barrel. This one is the JP Weiser Seven Rebels Rare Cask Series. This one here, green spot, pot still finished in Zinfandel wine cask, Shadow Montalena. And okay, this was the one that I was really after. The Lafroy Karchus Triple Wood. They only had six bottles at the place, and I managed to get one. I was 12th in line. And last but definitely not least, this is another prize. Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye. And I'll be able to get a 20 year old Alberta Premium soonish. I asked them to order it. I asked them to order it at the store where I go uh, last uh, couple weeks ago. So they should be getting that. Oh, uh, uh, what's going on here? Oh, lots of stuff going on here. Uh oh, Malted in Montreal is here. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, I did the recap there for you, Snearson. Donor Pass says, uh, like a kickstand. Okay, Whiskey Friend says, Whiskey Snearson, hey, fella. Don Holland, hello, friend, what are you doing, Alan? Okay. What are you drinking, Alan? Oh, okay. Uh, Swami Suave, hello, gang, sup, Quig? Oh, it's been up all, all the whole time. We've been a great little live stream here. We've been going for two hours and three minutes. Uh, evening, Alan, at the Whiskey Friend, who's afraid of Eric Nording, says, uh, do you like Jameson, especially Caskmate? Yeah, um, I had the, uh, the Stout Edition, and most recently I had one called uh, Bale Breaker when I was down in uh, Washington State, and the Bale Breaker was interesting. I also have an IPA, which I haven't opened yet, but I will. Uh, I, I like Jameson. It's nice and easy drinking. You don't have to think about it too much. You just drink and enjoy. Donner Pass says, hi, Swami. Okay, Greg's Whiskey Guide. Uh, <laughs> okay, Swami says, I'll wait 20 minutes for Quig to get to my comment. <laughs> hey, Donner and Greg. Okay, Whiskey Friend says, Don Holland. Tomatin PX Distillery Bottle, very tasty. Mmm, 
Don Holland says, what's up, Gooch? Whiskey friend. Okay, everybody's saying hi to everybody here. Melton in Montreal. He's only about five, ten minutes behind today, which is lightning speed for Quake. <laughs> uh, curious of that HP. The wisest 2018 is the second commemorative series celebrating the 49th parallel. Yes, I had that one. The first was the 150. I did not get a 150, but I got the 49th parallel. It was not a problem to get that one. It was all right. Why is this 2018 is the second in the commemorative? Okay, so, okay, got it. Uh, Malted in Montreal. Hey, Swami. Sup, Alan. Uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide. Oh, man, I hope I'll be able to try this JP Wise's 23 someday. What the fuck is Cocoa Aged SM? Huh, let's see. That was the good or not the warts. No, wait, no, 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 not that one. Oh, yeah. Okay, here it is. Okay, it's Lowen McKinnon, cocoa aged, single malt, made in British Columbia. Okay, what does it say here? Aged with cocoa from Vancouver's renowned chocolatier, Thomas Haas. This Lowen McKinnon collaboration single malt whiskey offers notes of bitter chocolate, subtle sweet spices, and vanilla. Exceptional cocoa adds depth and richness to this premium single malt. Uh, that's all I know. Uh, and there's a hunk of chocolate here. So I'm gonna get to that eventually and find out what it's like. I don't know exactly. It's probably a like a chocolate malt. Uh, I will be right back because I got to piss and I got to get some more water. I'll be right back. And maybe I'll think of something else to have a drink, have a drink of um, after this old pulpy, which is excellent, by the way. Oh, I know what I'm going to have. I know. I know already. I already know. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm getting back to it here. Hopefully I haven't gotten too far behind. We're going to have one more whiskey. Uh, in case you don't follow the channel that carefully and that closely, so far, this is my top whiskey of the year. This is the Port Charlotte MC01 2009, which I obtained at last year's <laughs> Premium Spirits release, 2018. As soon as I saw this, I had to get it. That was last year's Premium Spirits release. I still have it. This is my top whiskey of 2019 so far. 
Will I taste something better? I don't know. This one just blew me away. Oh, it is. Marcella. It says Marcella somewhere on it. Um, poor Charlotte. I know it's Marcella. I don't know where it says it, but I know it's Marcella. Good enough. Where are we? Uh, oh man, I hope I'll be able to try this JP Wises, okay. Uh, okay, I told you what cocoa was as far as I know. I'm not sure. You have to try it. Good Hammond Warts looks good. Nice Pike Creek, yes. I swam me and Whiskey Friend, um, et cetera, et cetera. Damn, many of these unavailable in France. Yeah, <laughs> especially the Canadian ones. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, hey, Snearson says uh, Swami. Don Holland tastes. Tastes even better, Greg. Whiskey friend says a food quick. You're like Captain 3D. There with all the whiskey. <laughs> yeah, well, not nearly anywhere nearly. That guy. Ah, what he brought back from the UK is the size of my bar. It's just insane. <laughs> I'm going to do Shiva's series starting this week. Oh, that'll be fun. I almost bought a Shiva's 18 when I was down in the States recently. But I ended up bringing something else home. I brought a Powers 16-year-old Irish whiskey. So many people shit on Glendronic peated, but you have sung its praises. Can you tell us why? I like it. I like peated whiskey. In fact, I preferred the Glendronic peated to a lot of their uh, regular sherry stuff, but that's because I generally prefer peat to sherry. Um, and, you know, uh, I find a lot of Glendronic, except for the 12. The 12 was nice, but... You know, things like uh, Glendronic 18 Allardyce is too much sherry for me. It's okay, but if it's balanced with some peat, <laughs> nice. See, like this one, this Port Charlotte, is. I like this kind of stuff because it's peated, but it has that uh, Marsala wine uh, finish. So it's peated. And, shit and, and, and wine, and fortified wine. It's a balance for me. I like the balance. When there's sherry that complements the peat, or peat that complements the sherry, and they complement each other, I like that. That's the style of whiskey. That's one of my favorite styles of whiskey. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is fantastic stuff. Oh, still my top of the year unless I find something better between now and the end. Mm. Marcella. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, there are people who might, um, who might uh, shit on Glendronic uh, peated because they're not into peated whiskey. They're into Glendronic. Glendronic is sherry. But, uh, you know, everyone's different, and I'm not a big sherry. Sherry 
if it's a sherry bomb, it has to be a specific sherry bomb for me to go for it. Um, I like Glenn Farkless, for example, but Glendronic is a little bit over the top for me. But that's a personal preference. Everyone's different. Just because a lot of people are singing the praises of of Glendronic, 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 I go, well, eh, Glendronic's okay, but I prefer it with a little bit of heat. <laughs> And Welsh Toro is joining in and sipping Weisers. Oh, nice. Nice. And they're saying hi to Swami. And Greg says, is it legal to call whiskey? Because Don told me there are only a few things allowed uh, in the... Okay. Start again. Is it legal to call it whiskey because... Don told me there are only a few things allowed in that 9.09% of non-whiskey content. To call what whiskey? Which one? If it's Canadian whiskey and it's got 9.09% of something else in it, like, for example, bourbon or wine or... Um, I don't know, rum. Yeah, you can still call it Canadian whiskey as long as it's more than three years old. If it's under three years old, you can't call it whiskey in Canada. But um, yeah, I think that's what, what you're talking about. Welsh Toro says, Swami, I got some interesting shivas this week, 12 year from 80s and 21 from the 70s. Ooh, that sounds good, Welshy. Greg's Whiskey Guides is interesting at Malted in Montreal. Got still one to open, a rare BM, not BW, and curious of the new XV, a bit expensive here. Swami says, I got the 1821 and the Sautern cask. Okay. Been a while since I reviewed a blended. Yeah, okay. Oh, now we're getting behind. Uh, Greg says, Sautern cask? I never heard of this one, Swami Malted. Okay. Time for Pete. So cheers at Food Quick. Cheers, Greg. Uh, Greg says, uh, we'll be soon. Go to sleep. Too tired. Worked all day. Sorry, guys. That's okay. I'm not going to last very much longer either. We've already been going almost two and a half hours. Amazing at Welsh Toro. Greg says, most rare would be a Saturn cask. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, opened my first Kilcoman yesterday. 2018 eighth release, 100% Isla. Nice. Interesting. That poor looking forward to what happens when some time and air have passed. Very nice. I had that bottle. In fact, I reviewed it last year, says Swami. Malted and got the STR cask for later too. The 10 year old. Uh, okay. Don Holland says, Love you, Swami. PX or no PX? <laughs> I'm talking about Coco. Oh, okay. Uh, not sure what age we'll have to look. Always PX kill Homan. Later, fellas. Oh, so Swami's gone now, I guess. <laughs> Oh, this Port Charlotte is beautiful. Mm. So rich and intense. Looks like we, we just lost a couple of guys. Uh, put some water in that Port Charlotte. Wow. Yeah, we're losing some people now. I think we're just about done. 
Uh, Donna Holland says to Malton Montreal, still letting the kill home and PX up have to warm up yet. Mm. Greg says, sorry, got to go to. Cheers, food, Craig, and everyone. Ah, cheers, Greg. Cheers, everyone who's left. We got 13 people left. Uh, we've gone uh, two hours and 19 minutes and something like that. Uh, thank you all for joining me, and uh, it's been a really nice live stream. Uh, it's been fun. Thank you, Sneerson, and thank you, Don Holland. Um, I got some uh, whiskey videos coming up of things that you have sent me. Uh, well, no, I haven't gone to the, uh, the Wellers 107 yet. That's going to be a while yet, but uh, I did the... Um, the wolf head and I did the, um, the JP Weiser's, uh, um, the Oak one, uh, the seasoned Oak. Oh, that was good. That was good. I did that just last night. Mm. This is heavenly. This Port Charlotte is wonderful. Well, I wish you all a good night, and um, hopefully if there's a Trenny and Sea show, I'll, I'll meet you all there and catch that one. Um, other than that, um, I'm just going to type something here. Good night, everyone. Slanchava.